quite a good move. Now, the point of this move is to wait with the bishop on c8. What white's being forced to do here is to actually find the move. Black's move is a constructive waiting move. He's hoping to get an improved version of the Capablanca variation. Now, in order to understand this, let's go back one move and give black bishop f5. Well, the main line for a long time here has proceeded uh, knight to g3, bishop to g6, now white goes h4, now black plays h6, h5, bishop h7, and battle is joined along these lines. Knight f3 is played, knight d7, bishop comes out to d3, and now black usually trades on d3. Well, if we go back to our main line move, which is h6, what black's hoping to do is to gain a tempo on this procedure. Also, white might not be able to play h4 at a convenient moment. So, white is being posed unusual problems at an early stage. And my first game comes from a British team championship played in 2010 between Geoffrey Taylor and Philip Makepeace, which shows all the advantages of this line. And in this game, White played knight to g3. This is already a sign to me that white is slightly confused about what black is doing. And black continues to delay the entry of his bishop into the game with knight f6. White plays knight f3. And now here's the real first big difference between this and the main lines. Black gets to put his bishop on g4, which is a more active location than f5. White put his bishop on e2 and black decided to take on f3 straight away. There's no real need to do that, but black wants to get a coherent position out of the opening. And this is exactly what Makepeace does, as he plays now in typical caro cam fashion, with queen c7 and then knight bd7. White castled, and now black played, again, a very unusual move here, h5, showing his clear intention to attack white on the king side. Rook e1 was played, black pressed on with h4, knight f1, and now black castled on the queen side. So remarkably, very early in the game, black has managed to obtain an aggressive position. He might not normally get if he played one of the main lines. Well, white decides he wants a piece of the action himself, and so gets on with b4, and black plays his knight to b6. And the point of this is that he's aiming to get one knight on f4. It's a very provocative continuation from black but make peace wants to put that knight in on f4 and get close to the white king white plays queen e4 and now black played g5 white pressed on with b5 and now black blocked with c5 bishop takes f4 g takes f4 white took on c5 and black recaptured now this is by no means a world-class game but it suffices as an introduction to our unusual system. Rook e d1 and black kept the rooks on with rook d e8. In opposite colour bishop middle games of this type it's important to retain pieces and go for the initiative and black shows the point of his last move now when he plays f5. He needed to keep the pawn on e6 protected. White dropped away with queen c2 and now black pressed on with h3. So, very good attacking chances for black, which were confirmed after a5, h takes g2. Well, now white is in serious trouble. If he takes on b6 here, then I think we take on f1, making a queen, and whichever way white recaptures, he's in serious trouble. I mean, he's probably lost. If he goes rook takes f1, we have queen g7 check, and then we've got this thunderous sacrifice, rook takes h2, leading to checkmate. And going back to g takes f1, queen, if he goes king takes f1, well then we just settle for queen takes b6. In this position, black finds himself a pawn up with a tremendous initiative. Also threatening rook takes h2. So going back to the game, white played bishop takes g2. Black played f3, opening up lines. a takes b6. And now the intermezzo queen to g7. And I think white's only got one move against that. He's got to block the g-file with knight g3. But now make peace comes in with a brilliant move. Rook takes.